impossible. But notwithstanding how great a destiny God has in view for you, you'll need faith to make it a reality. Faith Moments, brought to you by Patrick Payne Ministries, would give you insight that would guarantee your victory over the forces of poverty, sickness, and disease. It will enable you to stand in the midst of opposition. And now, Reverend Patrick Payne. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. Amen, amen, wherever you are under the sound of my voice this morning. What a beautiful day that the good Lord has given unto us, and we are grateful. We are grateful. I don't know about you, but I am grateful. I'm grateful to see this day because... I'm still alive among the living. What a wonderful time God has been to us and still given to us. And uh, if you are alive and you are glad to be alive, just shout amen to God for his goodness. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you and thanking you for this precious day you have given unto us. We take it not lightly because had it not been for you, we would not be where we are. And we are grateful. We are very, very grateful to you. Many thanks. Billion thanks. We cannot thank you enough. Oh Lord, yes, for what you are doing and have done already concerning our lives. We celebrate the finished work of Jesus Christ and we are thanking you for the Holy Spirit who is enabling us in this dispensation to be able to fulfill the purpose for which we have been born. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Pastor Sorry, God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, Pastor Story from India. God bless you for, for coming in. You were the first today. <laughs> God bless you. Say hello to everyone for us in India, our brothers and sisters in India. We thank God for your life. We thank God for your life. The gospel is, I know that it's going to spread out in India. It's going to, it's, it's going to blow up. It's a matter of time. So uh, we are praying with you. And trust the Lord that um, even in the days of Thomas, uh, who was refusing to come, well, the Spirit of the Lord is going to be spreading like wildfire. And so just hold on, hold on to the horns of the altar. We are praying with you, and it is well. Amen. Amen. All right. We've been talking about... Um, the the uh, the better covenant that we are living in now in this dispensation this dispensation of the new covenant or the new um, dispensation uh, that God by the finished work of Jesus Christ have brought us into this new covenant a covenant in which it is not about how hard you you work to um, be righteous in the sight of God. Because if you have failed in the book of James, uh, if you fail any of the covenants, you if you fail any one, any one commandment, you have failed all. Um, and so it was something that man, again, uh, could not keep, could not handle. Thank God for Jesus, that he came to fulfill that assignment for you and I, fulfill that side of the, of the contract or the agreement between God and man. Um, and we see that in Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 17th verse, where Jesus came on the scene and said that he didn't come to destroy um, that old covenant. He didn't come to abolish, but he came to fulfill it. Why? Because man could not do it. And so he being a divine, spirit divine, 100%, oh, by the help of the Holy Spirit, he was able to do it and then brought you and I into this dispensation of grace for which if we lack the understanding, we cannot fulfill to the max of it. Are you listening to me? So it's very important for, for you to understand that um, it's very, very important that um, you 
have the Holy Spirit um, with you and in you. You, you, you just, beloved, as a believer, as a child of God. Again, let me repeat myself. It's just not a, uh, enough. It's not enough to receive Jesus or make him your Lord and Savior without the Holy Spirit. It's not enough. Yesterday we saw that Jesus himself, Jesus himself, the Holy Spirit um, ascended or descended uh, on Jesus himself when he was baptized by John. We saw that. And then the Bible says, after that, the Spirit led him to the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. The Spirit led him. The Spirit led him. Which Spirit? Talking about the same Holy Spirit that he, Jesus, has pro uh, promised us that um, after he had departed, he will send the Holy Spirit uh, to come and be with us and in us forever. Forever, he says. So that was a promise. And um, indeed, the promise was fulfilled by, by um, um, the appearance of the Holy Spirit uh, in Jerusalem on the disciples. When Jesus had told them to wait before they, they spread out, scatter all over the place with the gospel um, of he, Jesus, they should wait for the Holy Spirit before they go out to do that. Because the Holy Spirit will empower them, will give them the authority, the power, the boldness, the courage, the tenacity to stand and do that. Because, beloved, you just can't talk about a gospel. You can't speak the gospel. You can't preach or teach the gospel without the Holy Spirit. Else you just be talking out of your head. Because the Holy Spirit, you know, brings you the things of God because he knows the things of God. <clears throat> The Bible says that, and and even the deep things of God. So for you and I to know the things of God and the deeper things of God, the Holy Spirit must do that for us, must reveal that for us according to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Are you listening? And so it's very important for uh, you, the Christian, to understand that without the Holy Spirit, um, it's impossible almost just about, uh, for you to uh, advance your course. Are you listening? Without the Holy Spirit. And so in this dispensation of grace, um, you're not just enjoying the grace without the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit, you can enjoy, you can, you can no, first of all, understand the purpose of this grace and then enjoy it. If not, like I said, you will still be a Christian you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but on this, on the face of this earth, you're not going to uh, uh, fulfill your purpose to the match. Are you listening? And um, you will then also uh, think that um, uh, the devil has control over your life uh, if you are going through some challenges or some type of um, um, challenges. Because... Um, the enemy, the devil, don't have no authority except on those who have not given their life to the Lord Jesus. And the devil on you, on the side of you, the Christian, only works out of your ignorance. Okay? The devil only works against you out of your ignorance. What you don't know. And that is why it's very important for you to know, all right, what God has said concerning you, the promises that he has given. And so when you receive, when you come to know, then receive it, then you can stand against the wiles of the enemy. Because what is given is what is written. All right? What is given is what is written. Ah, listen. God bless you, Rebecca. God bless you, Mother Lawrence. God bless you. Okay. Now, what is given? The promises of God are yea and amen. It cannot be annulled. It cannot be altered. It cannot be changed. And so, when you come to that, when you have that understanding, and then you receive the promise, then 
when you have that ammunition to stand against the walls of the enemy. So when he comes, you're not going to try to, um, you know, um, um, receive his fear. You are going to tell him that it is written. It is written. It is written. And what is written is written. It is written that you, you will be above and not beneath. It is written that you are a child of God. It is written that Jesus died for you. It is written that he has, he has, he has brought you to that place of this new dispensation of grace with a full understanding of the promises of God. It is written. And so he cannot. But if you don't know this, then he uses your ignorance of what has been promised you against you. Against you. Now, Jesus says in the book of John, he says, listen, in this world, you will face challenges. In this world, you will face tribulations. In this world, you will face problems. But don't, don't worry about that because he has overcome. Charles, God bless you for the work you are doing with the children out there in Africa. Okay? He says, don't worry because in this, because he has overcome. Overcome it for who? For you. And that's what he did on the cross of Calvary. Nailed it all up in there and said, it is finished. The work is done. He's done it. See, this is why I, I bring you the picture of the old law, the old covenant. In the old covenant, it's about what you did with every effort in your in your being, you know, to, to have a right standing with God. In this new covenant or new dispensation, it's about what Jesus has done. It's about what Jesus has done for you. In the old covenant, it's about your performance. Okay? In this new covenant, it's about what Jesus has done for you. That all you need to do is to receive it and believe it and enjoy it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And you realize that in this new dispensation, you don't need to share no blood for the remission of your sins. Because the agreement that God has with us, if you break it, you have to, um, you have to share blood or you have to sacrifice okay, with blood for the remission of your sins. And that is what the priest was doing or the high priest did once a year on behalf of the people concerning their sins. But glory be to God that Jesus shed his blood, that divine blood, which was better than any, any blood of any animal. And the Bible said that the blood of Jesus speaks better things even than that of Abel. Oh, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, the blood. And um, oh, and so you need to understand this, beloved, as a child of God or as a Christian, you understand. And so what the enemy uses is against you is your ignorance of not knowing the promises God has given to you. Now, and this is why we come to faith moments this and every day in bringing you the revelations and the understanding of God's word concerning you. So this way, you are empowered. But most importantly, we've been talking this week about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who is your teacher, your helper, your advocate, your paraclete, your, your, just put it all together. Whatever you want or you need the Holy Spirit is, He is. Bishop Jones my good brother, salute you in Jesus' name. Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit is all you need. And without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit, yes, you will still be called a Christian because you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But how you excel, okay, again, let me say this again. You're not going to need the Holy Spirit in heaven. You need the Holy Spirit right here on earth. Okay, when you make your way to heaven, you ain't going to need the Holy Spirit out there to help you with nothing. You need the Holy Spirit right here. 
And so that is why it's very important for you to have the Holy Spirit with you and in you. Okay, make him your best friend. I, I'm telling you, he's my best friend. I'm telling you, he's my best friend. All right? Because, because every hour and every day, every second I need him. And so you must have that understanding as a child of God that you need the Holy Spirit um, to help you in every area of your life. Okay, now we're going to see the importance of the Holy Spirit. We've been looking at it throughout the week. And why, I'm not just saying, because, but I want to prove to you that you need the Holy Spirit. Yesterday, I showed you that the Jesus himself was received. I mean, Jesus himself received the Holy Spirit. See, yesterday I told you that I believe that Jesus was able to do all that he did. Though he was divine, okay. But he, he showed us the way for which we can do what he did and even more as he said it. Now understand that it was the reason of having the Holy Spirit with you and without that you can't. Because when he was baptized by John, scripture says that and the Spirit came upon him. The Spirit came upon him and the voice came from heaven, the voice of the Father him himself the master himself says receive him this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased but the spirit came upon him and then to 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 confirm that scripture says that and he was then led into the wilderness by the spirit by the spirit are you listening Oh, Usu, God bless you, son. Okay, by the Spirit. The Spirit led Jesus. The Holy Spirit led Jesus. And so when Jesus says that the things I do, you can do that and even more greater works shall you do. Understand that is as a result of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is upon you, you can do great and mighty things. Because that's what he did. So you realize that in his ministry, in the in his ministry, which lasted for only three years, he did such great and wonderful things by the help of the Holy Spirit. Now the disciples were with him; they could not function. They couldn't do. Sometimes they asked him, "Master, why didn't we do, or we couldn't do this, and we couldn't do that?" Well. When they wanted to go out, finally, you know, Jesus said, after he had uh, descended to heaven, descend, he told them that don't go and start spreading the gospel until the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Because that's what he worked with himself. That's what he, he was able to function. And so you see that in times where um, the scribes, the priests, uh, the Sadducees, um, the far to see and the sad to see people, I call them, I mean, they were surprised as to, you know, some of the things Jesus did, the miracles and, and his responses, okay? I mean, put, put the miracles and some of the healings even, uh, even aside, some of the response that he gave to them, they were surprised that, I mean, how, how, can, how does the guy think like this? Gladys, God bless you. How does the guy think like this? Who is he? Where is he from? Is he is this not the, the the carpenter's son, the son of Joseph? Which school did he attend? Beloved, when the Holy Spirit is upon you, it's not about your education. It's not about your school. Now we're going to see one of the people who was so learned, so learned, everybody knows that. I mean, we talk about he was so learned across, I mean, across the books. He was learned. But when he encountered God, he also needed the Holy Spirit to function, to be able to spread the word, to be able to stand boldly. And so you see Jesus, you know, the answers he gave to the, um, or the responses he gave to the disciples, I mean, the, the, um, um, his accusers and all that. I mean, the, the learned people were like, what? Are you listening? And even, and even, and for... That was that was when he was even with the disciples, but even when he left, when he has finished his work and left, 
this earth, the disciples after the Holy Spirit has come upon them, which we have been seeing that, that Jesus told them to wait in Jerusalem until they have been empowered by the Holy Spirit. That is the day of the Pentecost. And then the Bible says that after that, they began to spread out. And you see Peter and John going to um, the, the, the sanctuary or the church to pray. In the hour of prayer where they encountered this layman and, you know, uh, there was a healing right there. And and it spread all over the place, was making, I mean, noise all over the place. And the same, you know, scribes and the, the Pharisees and Sadducees who encountered Jesus and they were surprised because they were the learned people. Okay, and wonder what kind of university Jesus went to and was able to give, you know, articulate his words and give certain responses to the questions they put to him. Now they are encountering Peter and John, people who have not been to school. He also. And then they said, oh, in, in whose power, in whose authority are you people healing or, or talking? And they said, well, it's, it's through Jesus, the one whom you guys crucified when Pilate you know Pilate was uh, uh, was determined to release him because he didn't find no fault with him you guys were still determined to kill him well through him and the power of the Holy Spirit we are this has happened it's not by our our own ability you see and these are people who have not been to school either so you see, the Holy Spirit is not a respecter of persons. God is not a respecter of persons. Your willingness, if you are willing, if you receive Him, if you receive Him. So, so, so it's so important. I mean, my job here is to bring to you the importance of, the, of um, receiving the Holy Spirit as a Christian. Now, now I have heard and, and I think I've seen or encountered some Christians who don't know nothing about the Holy Spirit or some Christians who have not received the Holy Spirit. And, and it's so interesting that we see even in the days of the disciples that some of them have did not hear about the Holy Spirit of what took place um, um, in Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit, beloved, did not show up first in the, in the Corinth. No, it was in Jerusalem. Yesterday I heard somebody say that uh, the F Holy Spirit first first show up in in the in the in in, in in the Church of Corinth. No. First came on upon the the, uh, the disciples of Jesus, among others who were with them. That's in the day of Pentecost. Are you listening? And so we need the Holy Spirit now. Go with me to um um. Let's see the importance of the Holy Spirit. Um, which has nothing to do with your education. Are you listening? It has nothing to do with your education. Beloved, you don't go to school to learn about Holy Spirit. <laughs> Did I say that? Yes. You don't go to school to learn about, I mean, the school of the Holy Spirit. Really? What, 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 I, what, where, where are you going to learn from? I mean, Holy Spirit was promised as a gift. A gift. Now, how do you go to school to learn about a gift? Where do you get some of these things? Where are you going to learn about a gift? Did Jesus tell the disciples, I want you to, 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 to stay in a classroom and, and study about the Holy Spirit? They even know nothing about the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? They know nothing about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift. It was, he was promised. Remember Jesus promised that I'll send the Holy Spirit, another helper, to come and help you in every area. And when he comes, he will lead you into all truth. All, not some. You want to know the truth of the matter? Rely on the Holy Spirit. You want to know the things of God? Rely on the Holy Spirit. You want to know the deep things of God, rely on the Holy Spirit. You want to know the things that the hidden treasures, rely on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will expose. Listen, we saw where the Holy Spirit 
I mean, people lied. They thought they were lying even to um, uh, to Peter. Okay, you know the story of um, Ananias and Sapphira, the husband and wife, who sold their property, and instead of bringing what they were sold to bring for the advancement of the of the of the uh, the work of God, they hid some, and they thought that they, they were deceiving, you know, Peter and the and the people, and they lied to the Holy Spirit. I mean, the whole you. You don't go to school to learn about the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? First of all, Peter and John and those people they didn't go to school learning about the Holy Spirit. But what they were doing with the Holy Spirit or by the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit working through them, it was amazing to those who had attended school. Are you listening to me? It has nothing to do with your education. The Holy Spirit working through you has nothing to do with your education so please don't try to um you know attach your education with with the holy spirit and why you have to you have to go to school to study about the holy spirit where you get that from well i i brought that into you so just please get that in your head there ain't no school to teach you nothing about it. What are they going to teach you about the Holy Spirit? Now you tell me what they're going to teach you about the Holy Spirit. Whatever, what you may hear is what I'm telling you here. It's receive the Holy Spirit. And we're going to, I'm, the scripture tells us how the Holy Spirit is received. Are you listening to me? So when I hear about the school of the Holy Spirit and you have to go and, and be taught of how do you to receive the Holy Spirit? I wonder who came up with that idea. All right, now again talking about the fact that the the, the God is not a respecter of persons, and your education has nothing to do with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Let us see a learned person who received the Holy Spirit and therefore was able to do the things he did. Go with me now to the Book of Acts chapter 8 Acts chapter 8 when the Holy Spirit has come upon uh, the disciples and all that they have be begun to um, um, spread out and uh, teach the word of God I mean spread the gospel Kumari God bless you praise the Lord all right and um, we had seen that um, you know um, the work that was going on the gospel was was being spread you know all over the place and um, um, now let's read for chapter 8 of the book of Acts and see something here very important. Now Saul was consenting, verse 1, to his death. At that time there was a great persecution um, which has arose against the church, okay, which was at Jerusalem. Okay, Jerusalem is what I was talking to you about earlier that the Holy Ghost uh, descended upon the uh, the disciples. Um, and... Um, um, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Stephen has now has, has, been, has been killed because, I mean, there were persecutions against the church, you know, against the church. I mean, like you never, never even, you, you can never, you can't even imagine. Verse 3, and... Um, um, as for Paul, as for Saul, okay, we're going to be talking about this guy. As for Saul, he made a havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. The guy was a mean, I mean, he was a mean dude. Uh, therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. I mean, there was, I mean, the, the, the gospel was spreading like wildfire. And that is what is happening still even today. All right, now put your hand there, and I want to show you something here in chapter 9. Go with me to chapter 9. We'll come back to chapter 8 and continue from there. But I want to I want to pick it up from here uh, concerning Paul. Okay, you see how Paul was going from house to house, dragging the people out and imprisoning them for, for, for spreading the gospel. Now, this is, this is the guy we want to talk about today. Look at chapter 9, verse 1. Okay, I mean Saul, sorry. Saul, then Saul, still breathing, breathing, breathing threats 
a murder against the disciples of the Lord. The guy was a mean, a mean dude. Uh, went to the high priest. Okay, this is what I mean. He knew the law because he, he knew the law, and he knew what he he has to do to get his job done. And so, and so, as we saw in chapter eight, all right, he was even going to house to house and dragging men and women out, imprisoning them, putting charges at, you know, on them for preaching the gospel. All right, so this time uh, he was, I mean, he, he, the guy was, breath, he breathed threats. I mean, look, look at that sentence there. Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the, of, uh, of the Lord. He went to the high priest, verse 2, and asked that uh, uh, he be given letters, uh, letters be given to him uh, to, to the synagogues of Damascus. So that if he found any who were of the way, okay, if he found any of the way. Now, this, that word there, the way, if he found any of the way, I mean, because of the persecution, there were, there were even some names that they were using, okay, just to, you know, get the message out there without, you know, because you have to understand, they were also taking caution, okay, in the word. I mean, in this dispensation now, in this time, all right, um, I read a story where uh, some some of the Christian brothers and sisters um, in China, and um, they have to hide, okay, they have to hide the Bible. They have to hide the Bibles um, to go and preach to some of the brothers and sisters in China, even in this dispensation. Yes, in this modern age. Because they have not received that um, the gospel completely yet. Are you listening? So these people were 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 finding ways to spread the gospel, okay, and not being because not that they were afraid, but of course they were using wisdom. Are you listening? Now you remember somebody like Stephen, okay, has been publicly been stoned to death. They were killing them, they were imprisoning them. Okay? Now Hey, can I bozo? God bless you, brother. All right, now watch this. So, uh, verse two says, and and Saul asked letters from him to the synagogue um, of Damascus, so that he, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Are you listening? Look at what he was doing. Okay, and uh, verse three, and as he traveled. He came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. He saw. Then he saw, fell on the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul. Now, beloved, if God calls your name twice, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> Do you hear what I said? If God calls your name twice, you know you are in trouble. In the garden of Eden, the, the, uh, the scripture says that God says, Adam, Adam, where are you? He says, uh, <laughs> I was afraid. So, beloved, be careful. You hear your name twice. <laughs> Saul, Saul, where are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? And, and Saul said, who are you, Lord? Listen, he knew the voice. His spirit connected. Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. Omar, God bless you. He says, who are you, Lord? He says, I am Jesus. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goats. It is hard. Paul, I mean, so you cannot succeed. In what you are doing in persecuting persecuting me I am the head of the church are you listening and then Saul and then Saul said um, no verse 6 sorry verse 6 so he saw trembling and astonished said Lord what do you want me to do and the Lord said to him 
Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Arise and go to the city, and you will be told what you should do. Arise and go to the city, you will be told what you should do. Verse 7. And the men who journeyed with Saul, the men who were with him, stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Hearing a voice as an evidence of what Paul of or Saul has heard. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were open, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither eat nor drink. He didn't drink nothing. He didn't drink nothing. I mean, he's like the guy went into a three-day fast. Because he lost his sight. He lost his sight as a result of encountering Jesus, persecuting Jesus. He lost his sight. Verse 10. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, he called his name one time. Because he wasn't in trouble. <laughs> Ananias, he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight. The street called Straight. And inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. That was all. Verse 13. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. Bishop Jones, God bless you. Ananias says, Lord, you, you are sending me to this, this guy called Saul? Are you kidding me? I have heard how, how he has been tormenting the people of God in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. Lord, maybe you don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> That's Ananias. He says, Lord, maybe you don't know what's happening. This Saul was already persecuting us. And, in, and in, order, in order to, because he's a man of the law, so in order to justify even what he was doing without anybody questioning or putting any, I mean, pointing fingers, he has acquired a letter from the high priest to even do that. And you are sending me to him? Lord, maybe you don't know about this guy. Verse 15, that's so interesting. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, for he, Saul, is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before, watch this, before the Gentiles. Now, why the Gentiles? Because the gospel was preached in the areas of the Jews. So now I want to bring in the Gentiles. And this guy is very persuasive. I can use him. He's mine. He's, he's a chosen vessel of mine, says the Lord, to bear my name before Gentiles, kings and the children of Israel. His assignment is serious. Mario, God bless you. God bless you, Mario. Are you listening? Verse 16, For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Ah! I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Beloved, when you go through some small challenge 
and you are making noise like oh god and and, and satan is doing this and, and especially some of you from this part of the world that continent you know who i'm talking about everything is demon all right suffer for god's hey. if anybody tells you today you probably says no nah, i don't want to be a christian huh <laughs> thank god for jesus <laughs> verse 17 and Ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him Saul he said brother Saul <laughs> the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit the Lord has sent me the Lord Jesus to lay hands on you so that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Beloved, after the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples in Jerusalem, which the, script, the scripture described them as as thorns on, on their heads, on each of them, henceforth, the Holy Spirit came upon people by the laying of hands and the impartation took place. The laying of hands. Not going to a college called College of the Holy Spirit to go and learn uh, uh, learn how to receive the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? Where did you get this? I'm, you have to go to school to learn about the Holy Spirit and how how to uh, receive the Holy Spirit. And and some of some some of, of you who have been under some institutions and areas or churches where they have to slap you in the face for you to receive the Holy Spirit or been knocking you on top of your head you know receive it receive it, receive it, receive it now where do you get that how are you going to be knocking people on their head or slapping them on their face and telling them and putting people in their room from morning until evening tell everybody if you don't receive the holy spirit you're not coming out where did you get this my goodness where did you get this where did you get this Please be careful. Understand the gospel. Understand the word. Hmm. Ananias laid his hands on Saul of Tarsus. That mean son of son of son of. <laughs> that dude. That mean dude. All right. He laid his hands on him to receive his sight. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, verse 18, there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once. And he arose and was baptized. And when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Now, you realize that he was in Damascus to arrest anybody and all these people, men and women talking about the gospel, was preaching the gospel, to send them to Jerusalem. Because he understood the territories. And um, verse 20, immediately, watch this now, immediately, now the Holy Ghost has come upon him. The Holy Spirit has come upon him. Now immediately he preached the Christ. He preached the Christ in the synagogues or in the churches. That he is the Son of God. Oh, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Beloved, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, this is what I'm telling you. And this is a learned man. This is somebody who knows the books. Now, which classroom did he go to learn about Holy Spirit? 
Where did you get this? Which classroom or which college or university did you see Paul going to sit down to learn about the Holy Spirit? Now, when the Holy Spirit came upon him, the Bible said that he started, um, he's preaching Christ. He's preaching Christ. Glory be to God. Then all who had, verse 31, then all who had were amazed. Why wouldn't they be amazed? And said, is this not he who destroyed those who call on this name in Jerusalem? And he has come here for that purpose so that he might bring them bound to the chief priest. Remember, that is where he went to Damascus to do. He received a letter. He received authority to go to Damascus because he was a Jew in Jerusalem persecuting them. And he knew that their people had scattered all over the place in in Damascus, in Samaria, and all these places, and he was persecuting them. He was, he was chasing them just to destroy them. So he met his march in Damascus. Is he not the same guy? Verse 22. But Saul confounded the Jews. No, sorry. But Saul increased it all the more in strength. He increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that this Jesus is the Christ. Hmm. Proving that he, Jesus, is the Christ. Why? I can prove it. I have the Holy Ghost in me. Why? Because I, I hated the name that I'm now preaching about. Why? Because on my way down to Damascus, I had an encounter of somebody calling my, my name that I fell on the ground and had a communication with the voice which I believe in my spirit connected that this is the voice of God. And I asked, who are you? And he, the voice says, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. I have an evidence. That's, that's an evidence because everybody knows who I am. So, I'll kill you. I'll, I'll kill you. I'll persecute you. I'll put you in jail. I'll put you in a place that by the time you come out, you, would, you wouldn't even remember the name, your name or the day you were born. Glory be to God. But now I have a, an evidence. That this Jesus is indeed the Christ. Woo! When the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Spirit, huh, uh, let, let me sing one of my, my, my songs about, about the Holy Spirit to you. Now this one, Nobody can do nothing about it. I don't need permission to sing that. Okay? So that's why you don't see it on the screen. I don't need permission. This is my song. <laughs> and this is my story. Holy Ghost, Comforter, Teacher, Advocate, Paraclete, Master, Keeper, some call you Holy Spirit. Some say Holy Ghost. But I long to call you friend. Some say Holy Spirit. Some say Holy Ghost. But I long to call you friend. That's my song. <laughs> hey! When the Holy Ghost come upon you, glory be to God. Ask Jesus, he'll tell you. He can, you can do exploit. Beloved, how do you say I am a Christian without the Holy Spirit? Tell me. And this 
this dispensation of grace. Oh, you can. I don't know how you can. Number one, how do you even understand? No, because somebody said it, so you are also saying it. How, do you have the experience? You see, you see Saul, he had that experience. He had an encounter. He had that encounter with the Holy Spirit. Patricia, God bless you. <laughs> the Doxa, the Doxa Conference pastor's wife. Hey, daughter. I hope the conference is going well. How do you say you are a Christian without the Holy Spirit? Well, you are a Coca-Cola bottle without the, the product in it. That makes the whole bottle complete. Because without the product of that drink in it, the bottle just have that inscription of the name. Coca-Cola, but it don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. You, you need what is in that bottle. When the Holy Spirit has come upon Saul, hey, his story changed. You need the Holy Spirit, beloved. Trust me. Listen, you you want to see you want to see advancement in the ministry? You need the Holy Spirit. You want to see your business increase? You need the Holy Spirit. You want to see the marriage so mm, 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 love it, love it, love it? You need the Holy Spirit. You want to see the kind of friends you have, the true friends, you need the Holy Spirit. Because you see, I'm going to prove something to you, all right, in the book of Corinthians, that only the Holy Spirit knows the things of God. Not only the things of God, but even the deep things of God. And like I said, we saw in the book of Acts also, Acts chapter 3. Just go there and read it yourself. How Ananias and Sapphire, they thought they were lying to the pastor or to, you know, the disciple uh, Peter. He didn't know they were lying to the Holy Spirit. Now you lying to the Holy Spirit? Are you serious? Well, they died. If you can go and raise them up, they will tell you, you better not lie to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Are you listening to me? Are you listening? So now we see that this learned man, Saul of Tarsus, the mean dude, is now singing a different song. Glory be to God. Because of the Holy Spirit. Go with me. Let me show now. Now, go back to chapter 8 now. So now, I've told you about Saul, right? Okay. Now, go back to chapter um, chapter 8. <clears throat> go back to chapter 8. Verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitude, with one accord, heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirit, crying, out, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were, who were possessed. And many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Verse 8, And there were great joy in that city, but there was a certain man called Simon, who previously practiced sorcery in the city, and astonished the many, or astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, <laughs> because of his demonic act. Verse 10, To whom all of the people listen from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of god you see where ignorance lies when the holy spirit is not in you you will never ever ever be able to discern the true spirit of god and the spirit that is operating from demons in a person are you listening to me? Oh my goodness. I don't want listen. This is some this is for you as a Christian. 
This has nothing to do with the church you go to. Do you remember that scripture that says, test all spirits? Because some, some people are operating from spirits of Baalzebub and not the spirit of God. You can have a preacher standing in the pulpit preaching from a spirit of Baalzebub and if you don't have the Holy Spirit to discern that spirit, you will believe whatever they tell you. Look at what was happening to the people of Samaria here. They, everybody was listening to this Simon sorcerer. And they thought that he was a man of God. Because naturally, when people are doing things that are unusual or, 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 or not the normal way, you think God is at work. A lot of people in this day and this modern dispensation still see some some miracles or whatever you call miracles and believe and think that this is from God. You better have the Holy Spirit so that you can discern. You listen, no, I am telling you, and I and see when the Holy Spirit comes in you, you speak with boldness. I am speaking with authority that ain't nobody anymore coming to come and talk about I, I and I see and I and God said and, and I see God said. If I check you out and I realize that you are not of God, the way I will beat you up. Why? I'm going to show you the same thing, how some people were beaten. <laughs> Just stay tuned. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, this is exciting. Ah, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, so beautiful. Watch this now. Watch this now. Verse, um, verse 9 again. But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great to whom they all gave attention from the least of the people to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. Hmm. Verse 11, And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. How about that? Then when they believed, uh, Philip, as he preached the things concerning the, the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then this Simon also himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. Peter and John were in, Ju in Jerusalem. Who then, who when they had come down, prayed for them. When Peter and John came, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Peter and John prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. They might receive the Holy Spirit. Pray for them to receive the Holy Spirit. Pray for them to receive the Holy Spirit. Pray in your most holy faith. In your most holy faith. Pray in your most holy faith. Praying in the Spirit that they might receive. The Holy Spirit. Beloved, don't knock them on their head. Don't slap them up. Don't hit them at the back. Don't abuse them. That is that is some physical abuses. And and listen, I, I am telling you, I mean, in my in my uh, student union days, I'm telling you, we 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 saw some now look back and I say, how crazy, how crazy. Ignorance can let one be hitting you at your back, giving you knocks on your head. Speak it, speak it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh God have mercy. That they might receive the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Uh, for as yet, verse 16, he, the Holy Spirit, had. Um, for as yet he had fallen upon none of them, yes. They had only been baptized in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 17. Then they laid hands on them and uh, they received the Holy Spirit. Listen, 
laying hands on them is it's not in, in that in that practical sense of just beating people. That's not what that means. If it was beating people, I believe that the scripture will say beat them up. Are you listening? I will show you what that beating means. When <laughs> stay with me. Now and so and so they lay hands on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 18. Now when Simon, watch this now, when Simon, that old sorcerer, saw that through the laying on of the hands of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money and said, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands, lay hands, may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God the Holy Spirit, beloved, is a gift. A gift of a helper. A gift. A gift. Boy, my time is gone already. Oh my goodness. A gift. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither you have neither part nor portion. In this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray God if perhaps He thought, if the, if perhaps the thought of your heart of your heart may be forgiven you. And um, verse twenty three says, "For as I see that I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound." by iniquity then Simon answered and said pray to the Lord for me that none of the things which you have spoken may come upon me so when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord they returned to Jerusalem preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans are you listening they came from Jerusalem to Samaria and help the people out to receive the Holy Spirit. My time is gone, beloved. I'm going to do this. Listen, um, join me same time tomorrow, God willing. All right. And um, all better off, turn on your not notification button on your, your gadgets. Okay with me on face you know on on facebook all right let's see what the lord will allow me to do even tonight and tomorrow morning because i need to bring you to a place where we'll end this week by having a great understanding a better understanding to enjoy this better covenant are you listening to enjoy this better covenant because whatever you don't understand cannot be a blessing to you whatever you don't understand cannot be a blessing to you and so join me same time all right same time tomorrow and then again turn on your notification button because i might i'm going to pray the lord that i might come back tonight sometime this evening i don't know to bring you to a place of a better understanding are you listening in the meantime in the meantime if you don't know the Lord Jesus give your life to him and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit so if you are that individual let me pray with you right now just pray with me say Heavenly Father I come before you as a sinner I ask you to forgive me of my sins I receive the Lord Jesus as my Lord and Savior and I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit I thank you Lord for coming into my life be the head and all that I need I surrender my whole life into your hands and I thank you for receiving me 
Jesus name I pray beloved if you pray that prayer you have received Jesus and he is coming to your life you will see the evidence that you will testify to all people you will see it find out a Bible teaching church if you don't have one okay listen if you are in a church and I'm so bold and I know this is radical if you are in any church that do not believe in the Holy Spirit flee are you listening to me I said it yes flee run get out get out that is not the place you ought to be why pastor do you say this because Jesus promised you a gift of the Holy Spirit when he was departing now the Holy Spirit has come and you don't want to receive the Holy Spirit that will help you to to live a fulfilled life of this dispensation of this better covenant that Jesus has made a deal for you with God then I don't know what else you need if you don't have any church to belong to find one and introduce yourself to the to the leadership and let them know that you have been born again giving your life to Jesus and uh, you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit Barbara you came to close God bless you same time watch your notification buttons on your phone for faith moment either tonight or tomorrow morning same time God bless you but listen I am still on this appeal to you to sow financially into this ministry for us to get this equipment that we need to use it in blessing you all right so that we can have other information on the screen at the same time to help you out and so go to the website all right if you want to use a paypal Go to the website www.patrickquenoministries.com. Hey, Anger, Anger, God bless you. All right, go to my the website patrickquenoministries.com. You see a button that says donate. Use a PayPal, or if you want to um, use um, a cash app from your phone, you can also do that take this number down area code 914-572-9816 use that uh, that will have an instant um, cash up you can do that as well we want to get this equipment that will be used to help you to get the messages the scriptures all right sometimes you may not have you may be at a place where you don't have your bibles with you those scriptures will be there for you to download it yourself okay and so we want to get this equipment and we need your financial support to do that now the reason I'm giving you the opportunity to do that so that you will also receive some of the blessing of giving all right and sharing the gospel as well because this you are then this puts you in the position of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with this ministry because we will advance we are expanding throughout the world may God bless you of, for doing that join me same time turn on your notification button so that faith moment comes on tonight tomorrow anytime you never know that God will continue to bless you even the more as the Holy Spirit do his work you cannot be a Christian without the Holy Spirit and you don't need the Holy Spirit in heaven when you get there you need the Holy Spirit right here and so receive him let me pray for you right now receive him and let him empower you in all the things that you have to do in the name of Jesus father in the name of Jesus I pray for your people right now I declare into their life 
Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on them now. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, if you receive that, if you receive that, if you receive that, just watch what the Holy Spirit will do. Walk with Him. Talk with Him. Spend time with Him. He will help you. Till I come your way same time, just want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. There's a train coming. You don't need no baggage.